Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just gonna give one minute to allow you guys to come in before we take it off from there. Yeah. But even as you guys keep coming in, just wanna ask, how are you guys doing? How is the weather treating each and every one of you? Hope uh, things are moving on with you guys. And let me know if you went to my other uh, webinars, guys. Even my last one, which was not my best. I wanna know if you were there. <laughs> Okay, again, I will just take it off from here, even as people keep joining us. Uh, good afternoon, once again, and welcome. For those of you guys that are joining us for the first time, uh, my name is Gagba Esefaya, and I'm one of the training coordinators with the Temple Small Business Development Center. Uh, the Temple Small Business Development Center helps small businesses start and grow. We offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting and a variety of low-to-low cost webinars. Uh, we are part, and part of the nationally accredited networks of the small business development centers, which has over a thousand networks across the United States. Uh, you are here this afternoon for a webinar on Let's Secure Your Website. Uh, a copy of the PowerPoint and a link to the recording will be sent to all the attendees. Being a webinar, all the attendees have been muted. However, we always encourage you guys to drop your questions on the QA or the chat box. Without further ado, please allow me to welcome my wonderful Jen, even as she takes over the flow for the presentation. Jen, you're welcome. Hello, thank you everyone. Um, again, if you've been here, let me know, I'm interested. Um, so during the presentation, I'm gonna be taking questions. So feel free to drop them in the Q&A or in the chat. I um, mean, I will get to them at different intervals. So yeah, let's, let's get into this. So we're gonna secure your website and I'm gonna tell you how. So first of all, I'm Jane Clark. I'm your presenter today. Um, I'm the creative director over at BrandSwan. Been a business owner for 14 years. Um, I've done a lot of websites and I've been doing it since the 90s. And I specialize in brand strategy, web design, obviously, and SEO. And for any Harry Potter fans out there, I am a Ravenclaw. I've taken the test several times and it's unchanging. Um, so at my day job, um, Brand Swan, we help start up small businesses and nonprofits to break away from the flock through bold brands, savvy websites, and marketing that matters. We're 100% woman-owned, um, and we're lo located right in Newark with clients near and far. So today, you're going to learn about how hackers access your website, the best practices um, for website security, and popular security tools and programs. So let's get right into it. So first of all, how do websites get hacked? And we're gonna talk about access control because there are some points in your website where um, hackers can get in. So once a user account has been authenticated, meaning that they have successfully logged in, this happens, um, this hacking happens through these legitimate means. So they literally had the username and password, they logged in and now they have access. And that's because every point needs attention. You know, you have your hosting login, your domain login, your FTP logins, your, your uh, website portal login, and even passwords to other sites can then be used to access um, these things, especially if your web, if your password is the same for many of your applications. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about password management and how that can really help here. But think of it this way, you may have locked the front door, but if you left a window open, it provides the opportunity for someone to get in, um, or in this case, use out of date plugins to kind of insert itself. Um, it happens every day, unfortunately. So let's talk about the different tactics that you can have. So they use brute force attacks. Um, and what they do is they just keep bombarding your website and trying to guess your username and password. And they try to do this using patterns. So for example, sometimes someone makes the, the, uh, <laughs> the username admin and the password password, which you know is a really quick way to kind of get in. But if you don't change that, you have, audit, you have these bots and scripts that are just programmed to go and bombard these websites just trying to get in to see what they can do. Um, so be careful about that window you might have left open. Second of all, there's phishing and malware. So hackers build really lo good looking phishing pages and emails, and they're designed to trick someone into entering their real username and password combination. 
Um, so you may be thinking you're logging into the government, but really you're logging into the scammers website and now they've gotten that information. Last but not least, insecure networks and data breaches. So your credentials can be intercepted if you log on to like a non-secure network or a company is hacked. And I think we've all been a victim of someone getting hacked and our credit cards getting stolen. Um, so um, that, that can be an issue. Um, real fast, Garb, if you're still here, the chat is disabled. And I think people want to kind of get in there and do some commentaries. If you can enable that really fast, that'd be awesome. Um, so here is an example of a phishing email. Claim your tax refund online. Who isn't excited to see that? So they say, oh, we identified an error and we happen to owe you $420. But in order for that to happen, we need you to, you know, hook your account up to us. So this is how you think you're getting a refund, but really you're just giving away very sensitive information that can be used to hack all sorts of things. Did you know that 32% of all data breaches involves phishing emails? So be careful with that. Um, I had um, one of my um, freelancers emailed me and they're like, hey, did you send this? Because this is really weird. And apparently I had asked for about a thousand dollars worth of <laughs> iTunes gift cards, which I did not. I certainly did not, um, you know, uh, order that. But Garva, it looks like you fixed it, I think. Hi, everyone. The chat is working. Cool. Um, yeah, but so it, you'd be amazed. And but they do that called spoofing your email. And that's pretty high tech too. High tech as in above my pay grade on how they do that. Poll. So why do hackers hack websites? Do they want to disrupt service? Do they want to steal money? Do they want to steal valuable information? Do they want to provide black hat SEO services? Because they can? Or all of the above? What is, a, what is a primary reason hackers want to hack a website? Let's see. Courtney, you guessed it, all of that, all of the above. They do it because they can. They'll do it to steal your money. They'll do it to disrupt your service. They'll do it because you made them mad at the gas station. I mean, anything really. And of course, this goes without saying, but let's say it anyway. The more visible you are, the increased risk. Has anyone gotten a lot of spam emails that are like, hey, your SEO could be better. Um, we can help you with that. Your SEO is crap, but how did they find you through SEO? So they know you care about SEO because you rank highly. And so they try to go after that, that care that you have about your SEO, but really you were visible and that's how they found you. A little bit tricky. I'll take any questions at this point, if you guys have any. Any questions so far on how hackers access your website and try to do you harm? And what's really important at this point is to make sure that your website is you know, secure and we're gonna go into steps for that, so. Any questions so far? Go ahead and bring it in. I'll stop periodically to take a look. Um, I'm gonna move on. Um, okay, software and third-party vulnerabilities. This is another big one. So everyday web technology can be that window into you know, your, your account. So software that runs your website server, for example, so even, even software you have no control over can have a vulnerability. The WordPress platform in general could have a vulnerability. The themes or plugins could have a vulnerability. Web languages that do cool stuff like JavaScript, PHP, Java, Ajax, all that stuff. And your, even your own web browser can have a vulnerability. All this has happened over the years. I mean, that's why all these applications have updates. And if you don't update them all, um, you know, you can be vulnerable to those. Um, plus your website could break because it all kind of needs to be in sync with one another. So definitely keep this up to date. Your software and your server, you don't really have a whole lot of control over, but the hosting account typically will take care of that. They update very quickly and they, you know, especially if it's a security fix. So you will see sometimes stuff updating for just this reason. 
other than just being cool, you know, they're, they're fixing vulnerabilities. So here's a common hack that I've seen a lot of clients have, well, not a lot of my clients, but I've had people come to me for help with this, where a website is infected by a pharmacy hack. Who here has ever clicked on a website they thought was, you know, maybe a summer camp, next thing you know, they're at a website with Viagra. And you're just like, oh my God, how did I get here? Well, that's what these people are doing. And let's call them black hat tactics for SEO purposes. So if a website is infected with this malware, what happens is if you go to the URL like brandswan.com, it'll come up and it'll look great. But if someone types in brandswan or web designer Delaware and they see me and they click on me, that malware will rewrite it so that it goes to a different page on their server that's been hacked. And next thing you know, you're on a Viagra website. So that's how they get you and how they go. And they can also bypass detection that way because who here types in their company name in the search engines? I actually do, but I'm, I'm a weirdo. Or do you just type it right into the URL bar, right? So you can go a long time without realizing that your website's redirecting um, SEO traffic to, to Viagra. So um, that's another <laughs> attack. Um, and there are some really good tools that can be used to clean that. Some people say that, you know, they always have a back door once they get in. I don't believe that's true. I think you can definitely take care of it and clean your website. So let's talk about some companies that have been hacked in 2021. Um, and this is included, um, and this is including by a third party extension. And I'll go into that a little bit later. Well, a couple bullet points down. But Colonial Pipeline, did you know they had to pay ransom in Bitcoin to get their data back? So someone locked down their data and they had to pay a certain amount in Bitcoin, to which I will tell you what that is on the next slide. T-Mobile. And that's why they offer like the, the, you know, theft identity free thing every month because that was their way of making amends that they had gotten hacked. Parler, Kroger, Bonobus, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And they, and this happened via something called social arcs, which is social engineering. And basically they um, were connected to all three of these and they got hacked and therefore Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn were impacted. So that's another way you can get in through someone who does have a legitimate means into that system. You then, you know, kind of piggyback off of that and even Volkswagen and Audi. So guess what? Ransomware, Colonial Pipeline paid $2.3 million in Bitcoins. And 2.3 million just to get their data back. How crazy is that? You definitely don't want to be in that position. It's, it's absolutely wild to me. And of course it's Bitcoin because they can't really be traced, right? And you know, once you send it, then that's it, it's gone. If anyone asks you to get sent money in Bitcoin, don't do it guys. Okay, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm always super curious. Has your data been involved in a data breach? And if so, what company? I think TransUnion was definitely one or Equifax, one of the two. And you're like, man, if they can get hacked, then who is, who can? Adobe, Home Depot, I'm trying to think of my previous. Um, yeah, Home Depot, Regina, definitely that one. I was shocked, I was shocked, but you know. Anyone else have a company that they got? TJ Maxx, I think, as well. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, it's like almost an inevitable. T-Mobile, Target, yeah. And that's why another good um, idea is to not put your debit card online. Always use a credit card so that way they can't clear out your account and you can dispute the charge. Just a quick, don't, never do your, never use your debit card. Tina, I'm not sure if that's good. Oh, oh, so not an accountant? That's wild. I wonder how many dependents they claimed. <laughs> that's interesting. Okay. So let's talk about the best practices for website security. Um, start local and form good habits. And, you know, whenever I bring on a new freelancer, Josie, I'm talking to you if you're watching this. Um, I try to get them up in the systems and it is a pain in the butt. I'm just not, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a pain in the butt to get it set up the first time, but then it just works. And then you're, you're all, you're on your way. So if you use a, a password protector, like 
LastPass or Google, Samsung, I'm sure the iPhone probably has a version of that too. Definitely use that because then all you need to know is one master password and don't make it something e easy or hard. No, <laughs> try that again. Don't make it something easy. It also doesn't have to be like this crazy combination. Um, it can be a really long passphrase, like I ran 21 miles today. And it's just all one word, maybe it capitalize a couple of letters. So it doesn't have to be the super hard password to be really secure. Um, but using these um, password protectors, you can generate random passwords. So that way you're not using the same password on every website. And what that means is if one website gets hacked, they can't use that same password to log into a bunch of other common websites that people have accounts on. I mean, who here has an account on Amazon, walmart.com? I mean, we all have accounts on Amazon, right? So if you're using that password on, a, on other things, then, you know, they can potentially log into your Amazon account with that information. Um, so making your passwords unique and don't try to, I mean, don't try to remember that. Use that last pass, use whatever security you can because it'll automatically fill that stuff in and it's awesome. I also like the biometrics. <laughs> but what if they get hacked? I, I don't know. I, you know, that's if they get hacked, then you might as well move to a different password protected program. But um, oh, LastPass also has um, a cool feature where it can automatically go to all these sites and change your password for you. So if that happens, then I would probably recommend that route. But some will have to do it manually. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it could happen to you. Know, it really could. Um, so definitely check out the password managers and form those good habits. Second of all, don't use common username and password combinations. And there are some big ones out there like admin, 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 password, other popular passwords. And this is from 2020. Anyone use these passwords? Anyone care to admit that they use password or password one as their password? <laughs> also, every time I say the word password, we have to take a caffeine shot for the day. All right, well, I'm proud of you guys if you aren't using these, but if you are just look sheepishly away and, and find a new password for those. Um, let's talk about, we're coming back to your website, um, the hosting account. Now the hosting account is where your website lives and that has, all the, that has all the important files on it. So that's really what gets hacked the most. So you wanna make sure your web server is running the latest version of PHP and you can find this in your cPanel, but be careful because if you're using a WordPress site and it's maybe really old and you upgrade the PHP, it could break. Some hosts in the, in the name of security just force you to use the current PHP version, which means your website could be broken anyway. Um, and you can get a developer to help you with that too. Um, if you're running a custom coded website, like someone maybe uh, did an HTML and CSS and it's not like a CMS like WordPress, you could use host scanners. Um, so, and they usually have like a yearly or monthly fee, you know, and they always like daily go and scan your website for any malware or um, viruses and things like that. You wanna limit the file types that people can upload through contact forms. Um, you know, so thinking about it, you know, JPEGs, maybe even a GIF, a PNG, PDF, but anything else, you know, lock that down so they can't upload files that could be executable. You wanna use website back backups in case your website does get infected. So you can always restore your website and then secure it. Now, I don't recommend doing a daily backup or even a weekly backup. And if you do a weekly backup, it might be worthwhile to have saved like the last four backups because sometimes you might not notice your website has a problem until week three or week four, right? And if you just have like, and you, you don't wanna up, you don't wanna overwrite the good backup. So have like a good solid four weeks of backups that you can kind of load in um, if you do have an issue with your website. And the biggest one is if you guys are using WordPress or any other CRM, which is a content, um, yeah, CMS, CRM, not CRM. Yeah. So keep your um, WordPress and other sites like that updated at least once a month. And what that means is you want to update the WordPress platforms and the files. You want to update your themes and your plugins. And if you have themes that you're not actively using on your WordPress, delete them. If you have plugins that you're no longer using on your website, delete them. Because if you don't update them, they're just a vulnerability for your website. So keep your website clean. Um, and try not to leave inactive stuff on your on your website. Um, taking a look at a couple of questions here. 
Okay, Regina says, on my website, I'm getting a strange email, very long email for requesting to become a member or to help me build up my SEO. Mm. That sounds like it could be just a scam, uh, not, not necessarily a scam, but a spam. Um, there's lots of companies out there that do what we do and they target companies like mine and other people um, to just, you know, get, they just want work. They're, they just want you to pay them to do some stuff. Some of them are legit, some of them aren't. Um, if you need help with that, you can forward me that email. Uh, Melvo, backup, website backup is just saving info. So when you make a website backup, what it does is it, um, I'm gonna use WordPress as an example. So WordPress is comprised of the actual software that runs your website, like WordPress. And then WordPress keeps uploads, which is all, you, all the images and stuff you've ever uploaded to the site, the themes and the plugins. And you can decide what you wanna back up. But if you back up everything, it includes the, web, the WordPress um, software itself, the plugins, the uploads, the themes, um, and the database itself too. So it back up the entire website in such a way where you can restore a site from that backup anywhere and on any, any hosting account. I typically recommend Updraft as a backup, Updraft Plus. Um, is the backup software that I like to use. There are others. This one I'm just most familiar with and, and has never um, never had an issue with it. And so I trust it. There is a free version. You don't have to pay for it. Um, okay. So let's talk about the biggest question I get almost every day, which is the SSL certificate. What is it and what does it do, right? So an SSL certificate, it stands for Security Sockets Layer, which is why no one calls it that. Um, but basically all it does is it provides a secure tunnel when transferring data. So let's say you're buying a pair of shoes, you go through checkout and you click send information. So what happens is it takes that information which maybe has your credit card information and whatever, and it takes a secure path to the server from your browser. So during that transit, it's safe, but it doesn't really stop, it doesn't really affect security before you hit send and after you hit send. So once it hits the server and once it's still in your browser, it's not secure per se. So it just sends data in, um, securely, but it doesn't secure your website, nor does it prevent your website from being hacked. Um, it certainly, it certainly helps. And really, I think Google used it um, I'm sure you guys remember, and if you don't, that's okay. Um, at one point, a couple of years back, all of a sudden Google was like, whoa, if this person doesn't have an SSL, they're unsafe. We're gonna put unsecure on their website up in the URL, like right up here. And that was horrifying because it was a little misleading because it wasn't secure, but it also wasn't transmitting data that was sensitive insecurely either. So it's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, but now it does rank sites based on whether they have an SSL or not. So now it's a, it's a requirement to have an SSL to have the people trust you that you're legit. Um, and of course, um, for your ranking. So you can get it like 80 bucks a year. The web's really changing. So if you're using past um, hosting accounts like GoDaddy, um, there's a lot of them out there. Um, they used to charge for an SSL, but then you had companies like SiteGround um, in motion, dream, um, media temple, they all came and they have free SSLs and GoDaddy now has to try to compete with that. They're like, Hey, we'll give you a free one. You don't need to spend money on it. Um, so yes, you don't have to, it's free in most cases. Okay. So true or false, an SSL certificate prevents your website from being hacked. Let's see how well you guys listened. True or false, an SSL certificate prevents your website from being hacked. Yeah, all right, all right, guys. Well done. Well done, false, it does not, but it certainly does help your data during transit. Okay, Olivia has a question. What is your opinion about Surfshark BPM? You know, I've never heard of them, but I can do a quick research and let you know if they look good or not. But yeah, I would just say, there's a lot of people who do the same thing and sometimes they do it equally as well. 
um, I would take a look at what you're what you want to build and where is the best place for that. So, for example, um, I know that I love the user theme Divi, and, but I also know it's very resource intensive. So I know I have to pay a little bit more for hosting to get the resources I need so my website can do cooler things. Um, so then from there, I decide on a host. All right, so we talked about this. You're, you know, the SSL is a tunnel and you're driving, you're in the car and you're driving through, you're secure. But what happens when you reach your destination? You're at the mercy of whatever security measures the server has in place at that, at that time. All right, so this is, a, this is a good one. I think you'll, I think you'll like this one. I mean, I'm biased, but is security your responsibility? And yes and no, it's a yes and no question. So the first one is if you're using Squarespace, Wix, WordPress.com, Site Builder, even the GoDaddy website builder, they use their own custom platforms and handle security for you. You don't got to do anything. It's one of the benefits to having like a plug and play website. Now, if you're using a custom coded site that maybe your, your designer built for you five years ago, um, and you can tell because if your website starts um, ending in HTML, ASPX, PHP, your website may be hand coded. Um, so you want to contact your web developer um, for an audit or us if you want us to do it for you just to see if your website is secure. Okay, moving on to the harder one, which is the popular CRMs. Uh, I keep, <laughs> I have to edit this. I keep saying a CRM, which is, con which is um, contact relationship management software like 17 Hats or H HubSpot. But I really mean CMS, which is content management systems, such as WordPress, Joomla, WooCommerce, all of that is your responsibility because you install those things on your own shared server. When you install things on your own hosting account, you're in charge of the security. And it's as easy as, you know, making sure you have an SSL. Um, and really that's it, unless you're doing something hard, like getting, taking, um, here's an example. Um, for example, um, I have a client who has a, like an application who they take personal information from tenants and they send it to landlords to be approved, like kind of like a credit report or whatever. Um, so that stuff has a whole extra layer of security um, that you wouldn't need to do because you're not doing something that complex. So typically all you need to do is activate your SSL if you're using um, a popular CMS um, and you're good there. Now, if you're processing payments, you're subject to something called a PCI compliance. What does that mean? It's a set of requirements um, by the payment card industry. Um, and it ensures all companies that process, store, or transmit credit card information maintain a secure environment. So it ma manages security standards and improves account security throughout the transaction process. So here's an example of something that wouldn't be PCI compliance, writing a credit card on a post-it note, saving your credit card on your own server. So, it, in order to kind of make sure you're PCI compliance, I made that a I made that an adjective. Um, you want to, you can use PayPal, you can use Stripe, and they take care of that for you. You just pretty much capture the information, they then take it and send it to themselves, and then you're off the hook. So it's not as scary as it sounds, but you do have to do things um, to make sure. And if you are taking lots of the payments and you're very online oriented, you might even want to consider um, like a cybersecurity insurance policy might be something you want to consider. Just depends on the nature of your business and you know what your the volume that you're taking. Okay, so there are 12 requirements for PCI compliance. You have to install and maintain a firewall which your server typically does. Um, do not use vendor supply defaults for system passwords and other security parameters. So they don't want you using password, password, you know, they don't want you doing any of that stuff. They want you to protect the stored, the stored cold card holder data, that's a tongue twister. So, you know, you don't wanna just have the files on password protected. Maybe for example, um, when I'm working with my clients, I keep their passwords very safe inside of the last possible. So that's my, um, you know, my effort there. Um, 
you need to encrypt any transmission of cardholder data across open public networks. So again, that's the that SSL. You need to use and regularly update antivirus software. You need to maintain secure systems and applications, keeping it updated. Um, restrict access to cold cardholder data, meaning don't just leave post notes with, with uh, information laying around. You know, it needs to be under lock and key. Um, and some of this stuff, you know, assign a unique ID to each person with computer access, which means um, if they make an account with you, that that allows it allows you to track them more easily. There's a lot of ways that you can do that. I'm just trying to keep it layman's terms. Um, so physical access is the same thing as really access to card, her, card holder data there. You don't want to leave stuff laying around. Track and monitor all access to network resources and card holder data. Who has access to your website and can view those things? Do they have the right permissions? Do they need to have full permission, permissions to view the credit card information or can they? Um, be dumbed down a bit. They don't need access to that. You don't need to give it to them. Because if someone, if you do get hacked or something happens, you're like, okay, well, who had access to that? And it might not even be that that person did something maliciously. It might just be that they allowed the opportunity for someone else to inject malicious content. Um, regularly test security systems and processes and maintain a policy that addresses information security for all personnel. So that is basically the 12 requirements for PCI compliance. A lot of them are open-ended and a lot of them kind of happen automatically based on what software you're using to power your website. Um, so don't stress too much about it. Usually this is covered when you're doing things. And this just lets you know that again, if you're using these th third-party process payments like PayPal, Stripe, they handle this for you. And you only become responsible once you actually begin storing credit card information on your own system instead of just passing it along through the SSL tunnel. An example of this might be if someone's taking reoccurring payments, how are you processing that payment? What software are you using? Um, or are you using Stripe, which you can actually do um, reoccurring payments through them? So just again, check those type of things. All right, question time. Um, Becca Phillips asks, are PayPal, Venmo, and Square all PCI compliant? Yes, I would. They should be. If they're not, that would be scary. But <laughs> yes, they take care of that for you, and they are considered PCI compliant. And they're the ones that want you to be PCI compliant, because if something happens, they're on the hook for it, too. Courtney says, I am thankful my CCP does a PCI compliance. My first year open, I attempted it never again. I, it's, it's a lot, you know, I mean, as a business owner, you, you kind of have to take a look at everything, but every now and then it just feels much better to just outsource something so you don't have to think about it and let the experts handle it. So I completely agree with that. Any other questions? All right, we're moving forward. If you have one, um, I'll get to it. Just uh, go ahead and post it. So the best programs and tools to secure your WordPress website. Oh, we got one. Is there a way to tell which installed plugins are used for the site if you do not remember? Yes, actually. Um, there is a website called builtwith.com. Let me just double check on that. Yes. So what you can do is put your website URL here and it tells you everything that's installed on your website. So let's say I'm going to paste this link in for you into the chat. Um, and let's say, you know, you have a bunch of plugins already installed and they're all active, but you're like, are we really using all of them? Then you can come here and see what's not being used and you can on it, you can deactivate it. Then once you deactivate a plugin, you can take a look at your site, make sure nothing's broken, and then you can delete it after like maybe a month or so. That would that's what I would do. Um, and then make a backup, of course, before you start deleting things. But this is a good way. As you can see, we have a lot of stuff on here and there's a lot of duplicates. Um, but we have a lot of stuff. But it tells you so much about your website, the whatever is powering it. It's really cool. Don't sign me out. Oh, for Christ's sake. Here we go. My computer is grand.
And no, I don't remember my email password because it's in LastPass. I know if I was trapped somewhere and didn't know my email account, I would be lost forever. <laughs> True, but you know, that's the bad thing about systems is like, if you deviate from a system, you're like, oh, how do I get into that? But once it works, it's like awesome, in my opinion. Um, all right, let's get back to where we want to be. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. On to the fun things. The best programs and tools to secure your WordPress website. Um, okay, I hope that answered your question. Anonymous. All right, recommended WordPress plugins. Okay, so WordFence security is very comprehensive and but it takes a lot of resources. It, there are free and paid options. So if you are, where your website's been hacked before, or I would run WordFence security and actually use that to clean your website because it can do a scan and then it, you can remove the malware that way. So if you're in trouble and your website's hacked, this is where I would start. Now for after you're done kind of doing the scan and you know your site's secure, depending on what server someone's running, I will uninstall that and I will install two other plugins to replace it. That sounds kind of silly, but these plugins are much lighter weight and they kind of prevent some of the issues. The first one is Loganizer. This one's a really popular one and I'm sure many of you have heard of it. What it does is it prevents brute force attacks. So when that script is like, hmm, I found a website that I want to hack and it keeps bombarding the username and password until it gets in, this doesn't let them do that. So after five or whatever number you allocate attempts to log in, it will lock that user out with from their IP address. Um, so that can definitely help not bombard your server and provide the opportunity. The second one is called WPS hide URL or hide login. Um, and what it does is instead of your WordPress plugin, I'm sorry, your WordPress login URL being for example, brandswan.design slash WP admin, you can change it to be a different URL. So that way the bot can't even get to the URL screen. It gets an error message. So if it tries to go to, I might be logged in, this might not work, maybe it will. It should give a 404 error, yeah, okay. So when someone tries to log in, it's like, guys, this page was not found, you can't log in. So we're actually removing the opportunity for them to even um, hack your site. So that's what I really love about that. The second one, I'm sorry, the next one is Yoast SEO. Um, obviously it's good for SEO, but primarily what I like it for is you can hide certain content from the search engines. So let's say you have a freebie that you don't want people to be able to find without entering their name and email into a form. You can hide that page from the search engine so it doesn't show up. So that's just really cool to kind of hide sensitive content that you don't want to be found out there. Um, it's not exactly security, but it is a way to kind of do the same thing, if that makes sense. Um, what I like about it is it you also don't need to like have a password on the page if you do it this way, because then you're like, how do I give someone the password? You know, it just gets complicated. You have like an email that responds to them once they enter the name and email, but this, this allows it to automatically redirect to a hidden page. Um, Really simple SSL, this will enable and, and enforce the HTTPS because once you have it on your server, your website doesn't have to use it. So what you need to do is make, make sure that the website is forcing the HTTPS, which means it will automatically rewrite all the links to say HTTPS instead of HTTP. Of course, there are others. I recommend anytime you do a WordPress plugin, make sure it has at least four stars and up and lots of reviews. Like some of them have thousands and thousands of ratings, but don't use anything under four stars and make sure they have a decent number of, of ratings. Um, unless it's a really specialized thing and you just have to kind of take the risk. If that makes any sense. Um, one thing I will say about the SSL is if when you do finally enable it, you might find that your website isn't loading things. What that means is, um, your website, if it's enforcing SSL, will not load any content that isn't secure. So let's say you're working with a third party plugin or something that is pulling content that isn't, you're gonna have to fix that um, or manually rewrite the URLs in some cases so they have the HTTPS um, if the rewrite doesn't work. So that's the problem if you see like blank areas, 
that image isn't secure and you have to like rewrite the URL or something for it. Okay, so you've done all this stuff, your website's secure, now what? Here are the action steps. One, strengthen your passwords. Definitely strengthen your passwords. Use unique passwords on all websites. I know this is a big one, but just take it day by day. Whenever you sign into something, think about changing that password. Number two, check server security. Now, if you start with a server now, it's going to be it's going to be secure because it's starting on the most, you know, the highest technology. But if you have a website that's pretty old, this is the time to make sure that you can upgrade your server and that the technology um, that you're using is um, secure um, and that you have an SSL installed. Number three, if applicable, follow PCI compliance. If accepting and storing online payments, this is important to follow. Install programs and tools on your website to protect your site. And last but not least, because it is one of the most important steps is keep your website updated. At least one, once a month, go in. Usually there's no issues. You're making backups automatically and you just update your website, check to make sure it still works and then you're on your way. But don't miss that step. Put it on your calendar every month to go in and update those so that everything is working um, and, and secure. All right, guys, give me some questions. What you got? We tore through this. Let me know what questions you have. I know you have some. Um, and you guys will get a copy of this presentation. I'm going to fix my small typos before I send it to uh, Garbo again. But here are the references. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what makes the website secure, these are some really great articles um, if you feel so inclined. Um, but yes. This might be the most quiet q and I've ever had. <laughs> uh, okay, just a quick one. This goes to uh, our wonderful attendees. I just posted a 30-second survey about today's webinar. Remember, you, we at Temple SPDC, we always cherish your feedbacks, even as it helps us to improve the services we provide to you guys at a low cost. I can only take 30 seconds of your time and please help us to fill it up. Um, like uh, she said earlier on, um, it is time for questions. Please, if you have one or two questions, uh, kindly put it either on the chat box or the Q&A. We've got a couple of minutes left before we call it off for the day. So you guys have the floor, please. Take your time and come up with one or two questions. Yeah. Um, yep, and you guys, if you decide to have questions later, you can schedule a free consultation with me. Just schedule a call and I'd love to talk with you. And if you're feeling social, you can join our, our uh, Facebook group that just kind of helps and supports you know, small business owners. Um, thank you, Tina, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a loading screen sometimes, Courtney, when you're bombarded with this kind of information, so. <laughs> You might wake up two weeks from now and be like, Eureka, I understand. Your brain's going to work on it. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to give two minutes to mm -hmm. see if um, more questions will come up. But even as I wait for the two minutes, uh, I just want to use this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for keeping it a day with us. Uh, Jen, thank you for a wonderful presentation. And of course, to my wonderful Temple SPDC colleague, Thank you for your usual cooperation. Without them, we wouldn't have been here. And this webinar wouldn't have come into existence. I think someone was asking about your Facebook page. Yes, I am going to find the link right now. Let's see here. OK, that's that. We want brands. Here we go. I'm going to paste it in for you. Thank you. I would love it if you followed me. I guess I should have mentioned that. Um, Becca, she has a question. I love it. Okay, so she says, do you recommend any e-commerce sites over others for being more secure, especially the popular things like Etsy, Shopify, WordPress, etc.? If you're just selling products and that's all you do and you don't want your website to do anything else, Shopify is a really good way to move forward. I mean, the security is on them. Um, uh, so yes, I would say definitely Etsy. Um, Definitely great. Again, depends on what you're selling, you know, because obviously Etsy is more like handcrafted stuff. So if you're doing something like that, then definitely Etsy. Um, and then you have to think about, you know what, Etsy takes a big cut, right? Because they're bringing you the clients. 
So if you decide your own website, you get more money, but there is an initial upfront cost of doing that. Um, Shopify um, obviously um, takes a cut of something. Um, so you just kind of weigh your options and see, you know, what, what, what's best for your products. Uh, Becky, I had five websites hosted on one account and they all got hit at the same time. Since they found me once, is it more likely I will get hit again? Becca, that's a good question. Um, sometimes if you don't, I'm gonna say clean your server good enough, there are some back doors that they can still get in. And if you don't upgrade and fix the security, that, that back door still exists. So if you wipe it, then you upgrade your website, make sure your server is up to date, then it you should be okay. Um, but I would install WordFence and on all of them and do a scan and even make sure you select scan files outside of my WordPress install so that it checks the server for some weird known things. I hope that helps you guys. All right, well, you know where I am. You're gonna get this presentation and come find me if you have any questions. Thank you guys. Uh, do, and do enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.